hey, GED students, it's GED question of the daytime. And this is actually the second video I'm doing on the same problem. Um, I have to redo this video because I realized that I forgot to pay attention to the directions. So how like a GED student is that, right? If even the teacher can screw this up, certainly you can too. So let's go take a look and then we'll talk about um, uh, the directions here. It says the dot plot shows the number of GED students, um, I'm sorry, GED subjects passed by the students in a GED class. And indeed, we see this dot plot here. It says GED test passed. And down here I see the number line is labeled test passed per student. That means this zero uh, tells me some students have passed zero tests. How many students? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 students pass zero tests. That's what those marks mean, those X above the zeros. Each one of those represents a student, okay? So this says to the nearest percent, to the nearest percent, what percent of students have passed two or more tests? Okay, so quite a few ways you can do this. Perhaps my favorite way for the GED, especially since I get this handy dandy calculator that does so much glorious work for me, is to first express my answer as a ratio, a fraction. And you go, oh my God, a fraction. No, it won't be hard, chill, okay, chill. And then when I'm done with expressing it as a fraction, I will convert to a percent. Remember that fractions, ratios, and percents are two sides of the same coin. They're very much related. It's just that fractions can be out of any number and a percent is always out of a hundred. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and I'm going to follow this plan here. I'm going to start with a fraction and then convert it to a percent. Okay. So the question I was asked was what percent of students have passed two or more tests? So I like starting with a fraction because instead of doing it as a percent, I can just count it as a number. What number of students have passed two or more tests? Well, let's check it out. I have these three, one, two, three, they've passed two tests, but I don't only want the ones who've passed two. I also want the ones who pass more. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 students have passed two or more tests, but 13 out of how many? That's what I meant by making a ratio or a fraction. I'm going to put 13 out of the total students. Well, I know this is 13. Let me keep counting. Oh, this was also 13, right? When we counted it. So 13 and 13 makes 26. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Looks like 13 out of 32 total students have passed two or more tests. And so I get this ratio, 13 out of 32. Now, obviously it's not a percent yet because it's out of 32 instead of being out of 100, but it's super easy to convert this. I'm, I'm going to show you in both your calculator and by hand. To convert this in a calculator, in my TI calculator, I would just literally press the convert to percent button. So the convert to percent button is in green, so you're going to need to hit second. And then it's over the close parentheses button. You're going to see that little arrow, which means convert to percent. Let me try typing that into my TI. So 13 over, and I'm going to use the N over D button, 32, and then convert to a percent gives me 40.625%. Um, so uh, now this is why I said I had to redo this video for not paying attention because there were rounding directions that I did not follow. I said to the nearest percent and I totally ignored those. So easy to do, but since it says to the nearest percent, let's make sure that we do round it. Now, the deal is here, if it says to the nearest percent without saying 10th of a percent or 100th of a percent, they're just talking about to the nearest unit, the nearest whole percent. So you're gonna cut it off right at the decimal place. Consider the number you're about to throw away. Is it big enough to matter? Well, yes it is, it's five or higher. And so I'm gonna call that about 41%.
Okay, now if you're planning to do that in a calculator, which you would have if, if you did the GED, you can just ignore the rest of this for me because this calc problem is a pain without a calculator. But I will sure will show you how to do it without a calculator. So without a calculator, it's still 13 over 32, but I would have to know how to convert to a percent by myself because the, if the calculator doesn't do it, I have to know how to do it. So to convert something to a a uh, percent is to multiply it by a hundred percent. A hundred percent is one whole thing. So you're just multiplying it by one whole thing. Okay, and now since it's a fraction, I can cross reduce. Uh, let's see, four goes into 32 eight times and four goes into 125 times. I don't think I'm gonna be able to reduce that anymore. So now I have, see why I say it's a pain in the butt? On the top, I have 13 times 25. Let me do some side work for that. I get 15, 5, 6, 6, and 2, 5, 12, 325. Yep, that makes sense. So I would get this number, 325 on the top, and then 8 on the bottom. And it's a percent. Now, you might be thinking, well, what am I supposed to do with that number? How funky is that? That's not a decimal. Yep, not a decimal yet. I'd have to do the division implied by the fraction bar. 325 over 8 literally means the same as 325 divided by 8. So let's do that. 8 into 325. I switched the order to do a long division house. Okay, 8 goes into uh, 32 four times. Um, of course, that's perfectly 32, remainder 0, drop a 5. 8 goes into 5, 0 times. Uh, now I need to keep dividing, so I lock down the value of my uh, number with a decimal place, and I can have as many zeros as I want, and I'm running out of room. 8 goes into 56 times, so I'm going to get 40.6. Now, I could keep dividing if I need to, but I don't need to because I know, oh, sorry, I'm running, you can't really see my answer here. 40.6. Okay. I could keep dividing if I wanted to with a decimal, but I don't need to because I already know I'm rounding to the nearest percent. I can just stop right there. Look at six. It's big enough to matter and round that at 41%. So for those of you who've been messaging me, telling me my teacher said I have to do this by hand. Well, there you go. There's the gross work to do this by hand. But just an FYI, if you had this on the GED, you would have the calculator. You could literally just make a fraction and then convert it into a percent. All right. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, uh, drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.